This WBTV High Definition program is sponsored by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. WBTV News Prime Time starts right now. I was shocked and I was very sad. Now, it's a terrible day for the city of Charlotte. Uh, my prayers are with him and his family. Now on primetime, the city reacting to a political bombshell. Charlotte Mayor Patrick Cannon arrested, accused of bribery, theft, and corruption. Good evening. I'm Maureen O'Boyle. Great to have you with us for primetime. FBI agents simultaneously raided Cannon's office at the Government Center, his home in Ballantyne, and his offices at his private business in Uptown Charlotte. It is part of a federal corruption probe stretching back four years. The affidavit says this case began while Cannon was just a member of Charlotte's City Council. The FBI accuses the mayor of taking a total of $48,000 cash from undercover FBI agents posing as developers and investors looking to do business in Charlotte. The affidavit says he was supposed to meet with an undercover agent today. Instead, the mayor was arrested. WBTV's team of journalists has been digging through this affidavit for the past six hours. Our Brigitte Mack is in the newsroom with more on the specific allegations from the U.S. Attorney's Office. Steve Crump is at the mayor's home in South Charlotte, and Colleen Harry is at the Government Center getting reaction from the mayor's colleagues. Colleen, let's start with you. I'm sure a lot of shock out there. Well, that's the understatement, Maureen. You can imagine the news reverberated through government center here and around the city of Charlotte. It had never happened before. A sitting mayor arrested and arrested on federal corruption charges. It was stunning, practically jaw-dropping when people heard the news and they immediately tried to find out what, what exactly was in that affidavit. And as the news started to spread out, we're getting reaction from folks. Take a listen to what former city council member James Mitchell had to say. He served with Patrick Cannon on the city council, and he was also the Democratic primary in the mayoral race. He went up against Cannon. When I first got elected, he was like a mentor to me, and I plan on reaching out to him and telling him I'm praying for his family. And let's think about his wife and his two lovely kids during this time, and and let let justice uh, take its course. And as justice continues to take its course, the question is, what now for the city of Charlotte? Well, city officials tell me that it is entirely up to the mayor. They cannot throw him out as mayor. State law says he can stay in the office until he is convicted. It is up. The mayor has to make that decision whether or not he will leave and fight the charges privately, whether he will stay in office and do so. Should he decide to leave, the city council will then have to appoint someone from the same party to continue that term. If he doesn't leave, he stays in office and continues to fight that charge. The one person we haven't heard from today, however, is the mayor himself. He will obviously determine which way this goes. We're live in Charlotte. Colleen Harry, WBTV, on your side. And certainly when he makes that decision, we will pass it on to you. Steve Crump continues our live team coverage now. Steve is outside Patrick Cannon's home there in Ballantyne. And Steve, I know you watched as FBI agents removed box after box from the home. It happened about two hours ago. Yeah, about two hours or so, roughly 90 minutes or so ago, Maureen, and it was quite a sight to see. Let me show you what's happening right now outside of the mayor's home. You can see there's still a couple of news crews out there anticipating a possible statement or the possibility that they may leave. But those boxes were removed from the home here at about 530 this afternoon. Now, we basically saw federal officials, federal agents move a computer out along with a stack of boxes. We don't necessarily know what's in those boxes. And you you talk about some of the folks in this relatively quiet subdivision. They were just floored when they came home and saw a lot of law enforcement vehicles, television news vehicles and the like. And you talk about this case while well, they say that Charlotte has lost its Mayberry image. Yeah, I think Chicago, New York, you know, L.A., but never Charlotte. No, I'm, I'm depressed about it. And I, you know, my prayers are with his family. I just I'm so sorry. Now we learned from a former federal law enforcement official that this case did have its roots all the way to the Justice Department in Washington, D.C. But as Colleen said just a short time ago, no sign of Patrick Cannon. For now, we're live in South Charlotte. Steve Crump, WBTV on your side.
prime time. Steve, thank you. The criminal complaint, I have it here from the U.S. Attorney's Office, is 42 pages long. It says the FBI's investigation started back in 2010, then goes into very specific detail about interactions between the mayor and those undercover officers in 2012. Our Brigitte Mack is live in the newsroom with a breakdown of some of those encounters. A lot of the stuff is just so shocking, Brigitte. It certainly is, Maureen, uh, because this is what is called a speaking affidavit. That is why these interactions and everything uh, in, in terms of a case that the FBI has laid out are so detailed because this is stuff uh, that they won't be able to talk publicly about. It says on February 21st, an undercover FBI agent left a briefcase containing $20,000 in cash with Cannon in the mayor's office. The affidavit says the cash was for a deal being made with a foreign investor to bring more development to Charlotte. Another section of the court document talks about another interaction with another undercover officer, this time at an upscale apartment in South Park. It says Cannon accepted $12,500 under the guise of a 0% return on investment in exchange for future help with permitting zoning and or ABC issues. The affidavit then says Cannon placed the money near his ear and fanned the bills. Again, these are all allegations from the criminal complaint filed by the U.S. Attorney's Office. At this point, they are just allegations. We know that this will have to work its way through the court. Uh, Cannon is still the mayor of Charlotte, and he is innocent until proven guilty. The mayor was arrested at his office in the government center today around noon. He then went before a judge who released him on a $25,000 bond. Maureen. All right, Brigida, and one thing that comes up on page 27, and we have this at WBTV.com, the entire thing, if you're curious to read it. Cannon is talking to one of those undercover officers who's posing as an investor with that $25 million to invest in the city. He says, I told Trena she has a point. That's what Cannon said. That's his wife, Trena. The agent says she has what? A point, 1%. The undercover agent then laughs. At that point, obviously, he's talking about her getting a percentage of that $25 million investment, according to the affidavit. You probably know Governor Pat McCrory is a former mayor of Charlotte, but you may not know he is also a lifelong friend of Patrick Cannon. He couldn't talk on camera today, but he sent us a statement. McCrory says, I am both saddened and angered because I have known Patrick and his family for over 30 years. But more than anything, my heart is broken for the city of Charlotte, adding, this is not the city that I know served and love. This alleged behavior is inexcusable and cannot be tolerated. Just two days ago, the governor and mayor were both at a luncheon for the United Negro College Fund here in Charlotte. The mayor introduced the governor as his longtime friend. The governor said Cannon was so close with the McCrory family, he actually attended family functions. I was actually an usher in my brother's wedding when he was 60 years old. He looked like Lynn Swan. Talking about Lynn Swan, the former Pittsburgh Steeler, he went on to say that he believed that Patrick had fulfilled his potential, something his father strove, strived for. McCrory, we will see if he makes any further comments about his longtime friend as this case unfolds. Another former Charlotte mayor is speaking out tonight. Richard Vinroot says this is a terrible day for our city, and he simply cannot believe these allegations. I, I heard about these things in other places, and I thought, that can't be. That's that's uh, movie stuff. That's dirty movie stuff. Morning, how's it? Ben Root says he hopes the allegations are not true. We also reached out to former mayor Harvey Gant this evening. He told us he is in shock at the allegations and didn't want to make any further comment until at least tomorrow. Stay with WBTV for continuing coverage of this investigation. We have the very latest on the federal corruption charges against Mayor Patrick Cannon on air as well as online at WBTV.com. And up next on Primetime, incredible video of a young boy pulled from destruction, left behind after a deadly mudslide. Plus, a UNC Chapel Hill fraternity on probation because of the death of a Charlotte student. And local police investigating a theft at a Habitat for Humanity home. You're watching Primetime, your only live local news at 7 o'clock. Back.
Just in, there is a no swim advisory in effect for part of Mountain Island Lake. Authorities say you should avoid McDowell Creek Cove in Huntersville because of bacteria. 73,000 gallons of wastewater made it into the lake from the McDowell Creek wastewater treatment plant. Charlotte Mecklenburg Utilities will keep testing bacteria levels and let us know when it is safe to get back in the water again. An incredible rescue caught on tape out of Washington where that mudslide destroyed more than 30 homes and killed at least 16 people. The video shows a rescuer helping this four year old boy to safety. He was home with his dad and three siblings when the mudslide hit their home. The family is OK, but dozens of others are looking for relatives lost in this horrible disaster. Still to come on primetime, remembering Linda Petty. A day after the first lady of NASCAR passed away, people in her hometown say her loss will definitely be felt. Right now, the Union County School Board is meeting. The controversial redistricting plan is not on the agenda, but some parents tell us they will be there to speak out against the plan. The board is expected to address the budget. Last year, the budget process landed the school board and the county in court. A fraternity at UNC Chapel Hill is now on probation for alcohol related problems with new members. Kai Fi has been under investigation since a freshman from Charlotte died in 2012. David Shannon's blood alcohol level was was nearly three times the legal limit for driving when he died. Kai Fi now has to hire a resident advisor. The chapter's meetings, social events and other activities have been canceled. We've got new information on the off duty deputy who shot and killed a robber last night. This happened at the China Buffet. This is in Salisbury. The Rowan County Sheriff tells us it was Deputy John Kempf who shot the robber and the sheriff says he acted in an appropriate manner, but it is protocol for the sheriff's office to conduct an internal investigation. The SBI is also looking into this. Deputy Kempf has been on the force since last May. We have a crime alert. Someone stole construction materials from a charity. Habitat for Humanity reported the theft at a home being built here on Ridge Avenue in West Charlotte. The thief took aluminum scaffolding walk boards from inside the home. Police say they smashed a window with a rock to get inside. Authorities in Georgia say they found the wreckage of a small plane, but they don't know for sure sure if it is the plane that took off from Concord and crashed Monday night. Investigators found the wreckage in a marsh near the Georgia coast. The search area is accessible only by air and boat. The NTSB is bringing in a barge and crane to pull the plane out. The plane that took off from Concord was not registered in North Carolina. The NTSB has not told us who was on board that plane. A day after she passed away at the age of 72, friends are remembering Linda Petty. While the world knew her as the wife of Richard Petty, her own influence in the couple's hometown is significant. Primetime's David Wisnett spoke to her friends today in Petty's hometown of Level Cross. Level Cross sits under a petty blue sky, and the influence of the royal family of racing is widely felt here. The chief of Fire Station 43 put this rose and T-shirt on the fence at the place where the petty race cars used to be built. Well, it's going to be a big impact because she was really known um, through the community. Known for being the wife of Richard Petty, but also for much more. In the Petty Museum, we were shown some rare pictures, including one that recreated the couple's look from 1959. That's when they eloped and they kept their marriage a secret for a while. There's also this, Linda's alter ego from the movie Cars. It was based on the station wagon she used to drive to the races with four kids and a lot of food. Linda was a person, if you ever met her, she would leave an impression that she was always a positive person, always doing something for somebody. And in this small community, there are stories about Linda Petty. Her involvement in education made the front page of the paper. But away from the headlines, there were acts of kindness. Just visit Kivitt's grocery store, gas station, and mechanic shop. Longtime friend Jerry Kivitt says despite being the wife of the most famous race car driver in the country, Linda Petty was always humble and always helping. Christmas time, she would come down here at our store and she'd say, Here's the names of people that I know that need, need, have needs in the community, and here's the amount of money that they can come in and buy groceries in the store. And, uh, and people, then she would notify them that, that, that we, they could come here and buy it. He says Mrs. Linda would come in later and personally pay all those bills. Reporting in Level Cross, David Wisnett, WVTV, on your side.
That story doesn't surprise me. Everyone says she was such a wonderful person. The Petties are not planning a public funeral service, but rather a private service for family and friends. Linda Petty, as I said, was 72. Outside, we woke up this morning and headed to the bus stop, and it was so cold. Did not feel at all like spring. Felt more like middle of winter. Uh, yeah. It that's where our temperatures were. Of course, we had 20? the freeze warning last night. 24 was oh, the low this morning. I the knew it was cold. Record was 22, so we just missed it. Tonight's going to be cold as well. Mm. Not quite as cold, but Good. it's a difference of a few degrees, so okay. you're probably not going <laughs> to notice a difference out there. Beautiful picture of the skyline right now. Sunsets tonight at 740, and of course, temperatures are going to fall really quickly when that happens. They never really got all that high today. We topped out at 50, which, you know, is at least out of the 40s, but significantly below that average high of 66 and there's the 24 that I was just telling Maureen about and yes there's the record of 22 degrees outside right now we are at 49 winds now coming from the west northwest at eight miles per hour under those beautifully sunny skies very dry air mass in place dew point way down there at nine degrees so single digits very dry air and as I said very cold air again expected overnight tonight freeze warning will go into effect at midnight we were under a freeze warning in these same areas last night and yes, just as cold up here. There's no official freeze warning posted because this part of the Carolinas not considered to actually have a fully active growing season underway yet. But yes, every bit is cold. So if you are watching us from any of these counties and you have plants that you're concerned about, you do need to take precautions there. Give you a little bigger look at what is going on. Yes, we're watching right back here. This is going to be our next storm system, but it is not a winter storm, so there is a warm up in the future. It just comes with a price, as I said, and we've got just a little while before that gets in here. Right now, temperatures in the 40s for most locations. We are still holding on to 50 for Monroe, not for much longer, though. In the mountains, 33 for Boone, 34 Bakersville. Give you a little wider look, and you really don't see a lot of heat anywhere near us. You go down to the Gulf Coast, 55, you get back to Dallas, 62, but that's also the area where we are going to be watching, you know, those storms continue to push our way. Meanwhile, on the other side of the country, we have storms as well. In fact, there's been a tornado warning there in Northern California, which you don't hear about all that often. So not necessarily pleasant, even where there is more heat, but that's not our concern. This is our concern. Thankfully, it's not a concern for tomorrow. So we get a day to enjoy the sunshine and enjoy more moderate temperatures after that morning chill. As I said, freeze warning goes into effect at midnight. It will run through 9 a.m. We will have sunshine again tomorrow. And as this area of high pressure moves off the coastline, we're going to get a little bit of a southerly breeze. That's going to push those temperatures up tomorrow. Not quite to average levels, but we're talking low 60s, which is going to feel like a heat wave to us after the pair of cold warnings that we have going on here. As we get into Friday, chance of shower storms move in on Saturday. Back to Maureen at the desk right now for breaking news. Yes, we have just learned that Charlotte Mayor Patrick Cannon has resigned. The Charlotte Business Journal is reporting this, that he has sent a letter to the city of Charlotte, to city council, um, informing them of his resignation immediately in that letter. According to the Business Journal, he says, I regret, regret that I have to take this action, but I believe that it is in the best interest of the city for me to do so. He goes on to say, it is my hope. City Council and the staff of the city will continue to move the city forward. The letter goes on to say, judgment, these charges will create too much of a distraction for city government. That is according to Charlotte Mayor Patrick Cannon and to Eric Spanberg from the Charlotte Business Journal, who is tweeting about this letter that has just been given. Again, Mayor Cannon has now resigned effective immediately. We'll continue to follow this. We'll be back after this. Closed captioning on WBTV News is sponsored by Subaru South Boulevard and Subaru Concord. Time now for our primetime pick. This is from C.E. Robinette. His caption says, our plum trees are blossoming. We pick a picture every night with a hashtag primetime pick from Instagram. Use that hashtag. You could see your picture here on the air and follow us, WBTV underscore news. And a big thank you to all my friends at Rayma Road Elementary School. I was part of career day today. We had all kinds of fun. Thank you to Jeremy Mandel. He is the assistant teacher in one of the special education classes. The kids were fabulous. There were 
were firefighters there. There were all kinds of people coming in to talk with the kids about careers that they could see in the future. And some of the kids were so adorable. They were actually dressed up in costumes relating to what they want to do. And that's Niall there on the left. He's dressed up like a Charlotte Mecklenburg police officer. Thank you so much for joining us for prime time. Again, we continue to follow that breaking news about Patrick Cannon resigning. But first, a final look at the forecast. Yeah, here's a look at your seven day forecast. Freeze warning again overnight tonight. You can see the low of 28 in the morning. Nice afternoon, though, low 60s. Friday showers move in. Maybe a thunderstorm looks like a little better chance of thunderstorms on Saturday. Second half of the weekend, though, looks nice. Temperatures in the upper 60s, a lot of sunshine, and then it looks like more rain will actually get to stay in the 70s for several days next week. So that will be a nice treat for us. I think we will certainly enjoy those 70s. And we want to follow up on the resignation of Charlotte Mayor Patrick Cannon. We've just gotten confirmation from Ron Carley, the city manager. He says, in fact, that is true. He has sent his letter of resignation effective immediately. Patrick Cannon arrested on federal charges earlier today, including charges of corruption, bribery, taking money uh, in favor of um, pushing forward projects for the city of Charlotte and investors. We'll continue to follow this, of course, have live updates on our website, WBTV.com, and on our news tonight at 11 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you back here on our news at 5 tomorrow.